Um, my uh, sometime partner, Richard Blum, Diane Feinstein's husband, uh, he and I started Bridge Capital together in 1993 as the uh, first um, Western major firm uh, in the private equity business in China. Uh, I'd like to thank Shenwei Jen, who's been our partner for many of those years, who was here tonight from, from Hong Kong, uh, and Clive Vogt, our tax counsel, who knows more about Chinese law than anyone should have to. Uh, um, so uh, we got into the uh, commercial business in Asia in 1993-94, when my partner Ben Colt and I founded TPG, Texas Pacific Group as it was known then, and we started something called New Bridge Capital together with Dick Blum because we thought our business, which was then largely confined, private equity, was largely confined to the United States, a little bit Europe. We thought the business would become global uh, quite rapidly. And so uh, after we started the firm in 1993, in 1994, we opened up our first office outside of the United States in Shanghai. And I still remember that office, which was run by our partner, W.K. Zhang. It's the only office we've ever had that had a shower and a bathtub. That's about all it had because it was in some rundown hotel, which is all you could do for offices in those, in, in those days. Uh, um, and I remember our very first deal was a company called North Dragon uh, in English. I can't remember the Chinese name. But it was a manufacturer of pig iron located in Shenyang uh, in northern China. Uh, uh, it then turned out that they wanted to pay us in pig iron. <laughs> Fresh off that experience, we made an investment in a company called Weiwei, uh, which uh, made powdered soy milk. Um, it was a conveniently located a 13-hour overnight train ride from Beijing <laughs> in a train compartment with no heat in the wintertime. Um, we learned a lot about that. We knew that we had to watch carefully. This was China in those days. We knew, we knew that it was uh, possible that people could be less than straightforward with the numbers. Um, so we got to appoint the CFO. It turned out that unfortunately the CFO had no idea where the chop was, no idea where the bank account was, ultimately no idea where the money was. <laughs> so we learned a few things. Uh, but uh, rather than me talking about the, these experiences, I, I want to suggest you, those of you who are interested in China and in the freewheeling days, um, read a book by a guy named Tim Clissold called Mr. China. It's out in paperback, if you can find it. Uh, and it tells about what life was for those of us who were in the private equity business early on in China. And I can assure you, the hotels, the trains are better today. <laughs> uh, uh, I'd like to just thank one more person who's here tonight. is uh, Dino Jalal, who's the, currently the Indonesian ambassador of the United States, but in his earlier incarnation was uh, very helpful to us as we became the first major private equity firm to uh, begin to invest in Indonesia some years ago. Um, Dino, thank you as well.